traditional Nepal is a place where women and children are respected and cared for. It is a country where women are worshipped as goddesses of wisdom, power and wealth. Although life is not perfect and there are challenges, the public carries a tremendous compassion for mothers and children. In the last six decades, this sentiment and cultural values have also degraded tremendously. Confusions brought by Western education have left women's life stranded. On one hand, the lives of women and children seem like they are improving. However, on the other, it has made life extremely difficult and confusing. Here in this episode, we will try to explore the life of Nepali women and children from tradition to modernization with the hope that we will keep the respect and care alive. Feature in this episode, a conversation with Rukmini Karki about her experiences both as an immigrant child and immigrant mother herself, and excerpts from a speech given in MIT. Hi, this is Aruna Sharma. Welcome to Cultural Nepal. Today I have a very special guest to discuss about Nepali culture and experiences in a very unique perspective. Rukmini Karki, she has lived 10 years in America but her, she herself has born and raised in a part of uh, Indian state called Manipur. And her perspective on Nepali culture from her own experience in Manipur and in both Nepal and America is very unique. And we have a pleasure to introduce Rukmini Karki. Hello. Welcome to our program and thank you for giving us some of your insight and experience. Um, so would you like to introduce yourself first in your own word? Thank you Aruna. Um, my name is Rukmini Karki and um, I came to United States in 2005 as a student at Brandeis University. Mm -hmm. So I was, as you said, I was born and raised off in India, a place called Imphal, a very small town in northeastern part, border to Burma. And uh, I stayed there and raised up. And after that, I came to Nepal and stayed for eight years. Then I came to United States. Although we both are Nepali by our heritage, I, in one hand, have never been to any other country before United States. I was born and raised for three generations in Kathmandu. Whereas for you, you have seen more than I have in a Nepali person yourself, and then not only been in America, but have experience of being and living in different, similar kind of culture. But could you please tell more about how it is different to live in India versus in America as a Nepali lady, Nepali woman? Thank you. Um, that's a very interesting question uh, to me, and uh, I'm really happy to answer that. Um, my parents moved to Manipur when my father was in British Army, and during the Second World War, when the war ended, they, he actually, I should say, stayed over there and came back, and maybe he, he took my mom. And uh, we are nine children from same parents. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the Nepali culture in Manipur, actually, I should say, like uh, until I came to uh, Nepal in 1997, I haven't seen any people from Nepal in Manipur directly. I knew only people who were there. And so when I was a child, like uh, when people come with uh, traditional clothes of Nepali, Daura and Sural with Topi, we were really stunning looking at him and oh my gosh, is he the king of <laughs> Nepal? We really have that opportunity to watch people with their dress. Oh. And <clears throat> the people who migrated to Manipur 
was not in a very good position. They were all seasonal workers from Nepal looking for a living better condition and also looking for the education for their children. So what I have seen in my community in Nepal, it's called Mantri Pokhri in Imphal area, where the majority of Nepalese people were there. I still remember that how we celebrated this Durga Puja and <coughs> Bhai Tika. And uh, when I moved to Nepal, I really, when I saw these two cultural differences, I felt that we really celebrated more importantly in Manipur because it was the minor population who really preserved that culture then whereas with people with the majority staying in one place. That is what I felt. I think growing up in Kathmandu as a native, I was more fascinated of Western culture or Indian culture and I think I took more for granted of everyday Nepali culture but when I come to America it was more important to me and I missed more to focus on those cultural aspects of my culture that I brought up with and I could relate to that. But it was fascinating to know that you never met Nepali origin people when you were in Manipur. So is there any Nepali community in Manipur? How, like, can you also, I think our audience probably also would like to hear more about Gorkha immigration trend and in you know, a little bit of history of, you know, yeah, actually, like uh, uh, what I have seen, like uh, from my family, like uh, uh, the student Gorkha Student Union. My my older brother was the general secretary of that, and at that time, like uh, my, I think what I experienced is my family was a well-educated family, and people from who lives in the village area they come and take consult or advice from my father because she was the one who brought a Nepalese people, his friends, families, brother from Nepal to Manipur at that place. Mm. Because uh, for them, it was the best place for the children education, very good, uh, what you call weather, education, very cheap place and very good food, healthy food, healthy living. People always like healthy food and healthy environment. So it's a small town. And I've seen uh, what I said like a, I met so many Nepali peoples in Manipur, mm -hmm. but they were already there. But any new people who came from Nepal was very unique things for us. I see. Yes. So it was more integrated yeah, in integrated, the culture. Integrated, yes, yes. Nepali yes. people were more, and it's easier because the uh, culture is very close yes. to what we, you know, from food to, mm -hmm. you know, the terrain, geographical terrain and all that. So yes. it's very close. So it's much more, blended there than in America, I believe. So Is it that true? Yeah. How, how do you distinguish cultural blend in America versus cultural blend in India? And for a lot of people, there's not even much distinctions, right? Actually, I should say that like uh, in Manipur, it's what's a very diverse community, the place where I was raised. There were a lot of uh, Bengali people, Punjabi mm -hmm. people, and people from Bihar mm -hmm. and uh, 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 people from all parts of India because they they were in Manipur for the business. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Nepalese people who were there were mostly they were either from army group or either some of the people they uh, does the farming. Mm -hmm. Their main occupation was farming. Mm -hmm. So and uh, so. You mean like for as general as, as a general. Whole? As not a general, as not, a whole, not, not too much people Nepali like a, no. Okay. We were like anybody. A, we were around like a, I could say like a ten to fifteen thousand Nepalese people. Oh, out only. of ten to fifteen thousand, maybe five persons were really highly educated who were in government position at the time. Uh -huh. So. And what I, is the population of uh, Manipur during the time? Yes. Um, I cannot give you the exact figure, but uh, could be two. Um, Two millions. Mm, two yeah. millions. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, and it's uh, uh, again Manipur is n Manipur is a place where the original peoples are the Nagas and the Manipuris. Yes, and this will be a long story if I tell you. But let's sure. come to and focus to the Nepalese culture. Yes, and Nepalese people who really lived in Imphal at that area uh, where I was raised. So when as I as you said that 
what I feel here in America, I will skip the Nepal part because the majority of the peoples are in Nepal. But when I came here in 2005 in United States here in Boston, uh -huh. when I see on three, four peoples in the bus stand or subway or MBTA, I was so excited. Oh my gosh, Nepalese people here too. I knew, but later I know there are 20,000 people in my, in Somerville area. 20,000 In now. greater Boston areas. Oh, wow. But during wow. that 10 years ago when I was new here, right. when I see two people, oh my gosh, are you Nepali, are you Nepali, namaste, namaste. <laughs> so I was so excited. And you will be Eventually, surprised. Yes. When I came here in 1990, there were like two, three or four families. Mm -hmm. And they were never, you know, like I would not have met them if I didn't have the direct number of the person who was living here, a student. And so you barely could find anybody when I came here. And um, I was lucky enough to meet somebody I already knew, like my friend's sister. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, you know, I, I would get excited seeing uh, people from South America with the same hair color and mm -hmm. skin and, you know, kind of try to feel that they are from Nepal, you know, they look alike, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's a, yeah, it's how, how it has evolved, Nepali community has evolved, is amazing to me, and, and not only that, I am very proud to have you in our community as a president, tell more about yourself, about Nepali the Women Global Nepali Network, Nepali Women's Global Network, yes, organization, and you have been very big contribution to the community to glue together and bring back all this fun celebration that we do every year and um, you know make people feel like at home with the food and cultural and every, everything so um, so another Im another curiosity that I have is so you were your parents immigrated from Nepal to Burma first no in Manipur Manipur directly mm -hmm. yes okay actually my father was in the British Army mm -hmm. so when war ended okay he came back to Nepal and uh, took the family to Manipur yes so we just there was recently there was a movie about our uh, Nepal documentary yesterday on Sunday uh -huh. so it tells a lot about Nepali history and British Gorkha history can you highlight a in a brief introduction of what is that about British Army and Gorkha? Actually, the movie was The Last Monarch. Okay. It was not about the British Army or the British Gorkha. It was about the history of Nepal, like uh, how the Saha dynasty ended and how many years they ruled. And actually, the producer of the film, the director and the producer of the film were my friend who came from Nepal. Uh -huh. And they will be traveling into United States with this movie. And this movie is the longest documentary movie in Nepal, which people has really watched. And during that time, um, yesterday when I went to the movie, and uh, I learned from that movie that it really took 10 years for them to do the research, because it was, they collected the fact, and it was documentary, and it also shows the Rana regime and the monarch system and how the people reacted and how, what the government system of Nepal, it was a lot. So, so it was a very, was it was an information type of movie. So it was not, there was no highlight about war between no. British and... No, um, no, no. Okay, it was not I about see. that. Okay, so if, uh, but anyhow, I think it would be interesting to know about how the Gurkha soldiers started working for British Army and how the migration, immigration, you know, started in Nepal because I don't think many people immigrated like, like it today in back in old days, except for going to work for Gorkha armies, right, in India for British. So can you tell us a little bit about that and then how, you know, how you Actually, like a, uh, I can tell you about like uh, how these people uh, uh, from Nepal went to the Second World War, but d that time it's a very long, long, long time ago. So what I remember now, there is still uh, the British British Army has left that regiment, and still there are armies, battalions still. Uh, what exist mm -hmm. in many parts of like uh, India, mm. and there are the Assam Rifles, mm. which is in the northeastern side of 
uh, India, mm. where still many of the Nepalis are the army, men army people there. Mm. So uh, when when the British ended their rule in India, I think the regiment ended. But there are still people from Nepal or the people who stayed in India mm. still uh, from long time they have been serving to India as the Nepali Gorkha armies. Yes. So they still exist. Yes. And one thing um, I would like to highlight because as you said, so I'm very proud to say, say that uh, maybe not because my father was in the army, but he was in a very short time. But I would love to say that my sister, um, she's in India and she's the director general of police mm. at this time. And it's a very pride yeah. to Nepali people, like uh, being a woman, she has the highest like a position in India and wow. she's based in Manipur right now. Yes. And um, she's known by Bandana Karki mm -hmm. and, and she was in the, she, in India there's a system like a, you have to pass a commission exam. Right. And she went through all this exam. Very competitive. Very and competitive very vigorous, and yeah. very challenging, challenging position for a woman into that position. So, so what it says is there are a lot of people who has migrated to India, which was the, you know, preliminary, you know, um, phase of, I think, migration phenomenon in Nepali community, has been pretty successful in India. And partly maybe because of the cultural similarities and it's easier. But having said that, I'm curious about your, your mother had how many children you have? Your mother had nine, nine children. So, I, I try to imagine what it feels to live in different country, although they have their similar cultural background, living in a different country, still a different country, and having nine children and raising those children there at that time. Can you share some of the experience in your perspective? How do you see your mom and how mo your mom had a struggle? Was there any struggle in cultural integration? Doesn't sound that much, but you know, was there anything that you felt different living in Manipur? Did you feel any difference that you were from Nepal and you had a little bit differences and could not, you know, some, some of your... It's a not an easy question, but I'll try to answer you. <laughs> um, actually, like uh, until I came to Nepal in 1997 as a student, mm -hmm. I can never imagine the life of people in Nepal, how that would look like okay. than in Manipur. Mm -hmm. We're a very small community, and uh, as you said that nine children in one family, um, I don't know, like uh, when I have one daughter right now and it's so difficult for me to raise, it's so difficult for me to balance all my work life and the schedule here in this situation. But back home in Manipur, uh, we have extended family. I have seen my grandmother with my mom and my grandfather, my grand uncles, mm -hmm. and we are extended family. Mm -hmm. like. Uh, uh, I don't know about uh, how you experience about Nepal, but in Imphal, we have uh, houses like my aunt house, my uncle house, not very too far. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandparents live in a village where my mom took us in a, what you call, vacation time, mm -hmm. where really I, I, I enjoyed and I was talking just two days ago how we used to go there and jumped into the river directly. In, uh, you mean your grandparents were in Nepal? No, not, not, in, not in, in, in Manipur. Manipur. So yes. your grand grandparents yes. also came? Yes, after, okay. yes, they came. Oh, I see. So okay. that is how, like, uh, you, without even learning swimming and all, you go directly to the grandparents' <laughs> house and in a village and how swim you swim in a swim river. In a river directly. <laughs> so, it, so I was telling that yesterday to my daughter, actually, when she had a swimming school, yes. and then they go step by step, and yeah. I said, we never we have just, that school, we yeah. just go dive. <laughs> so that was a different thing. So I don't see any difficulties, difficulties raising my mother face so while raising was us. More simple. She might have, now I can see when I became mother, but during that time, 
I don't see, I don't felt. Yes. Because she was a very brave lady. Yes. So, and she handled the situation. And she had the support. Yes, she had the support. Like parent, family yes, support. Family and support. your yes. father's support. Yes. And it was more simple life back then. Just stay home and take care of your children. Then children are running around mm -hmm. uh, in a safe Giving edu best education. Community. Care. Yeah. And um, no matter what, whether you have an extended family to help or not, mm. but raising children are not easy really. Mm. Mm. If it, one or two or three or four, doesn't matter, but it's not easy. So then you went to Nepal after how many years did you, like how old were you when you went to Nepal? Actually, I went to Nepal after my graduate, um, uh, when I d did my graduate, mm -hmm. then I went to Nepal to do my master's. Mm. I was like uh, maybe 23 years old at the time. So was that, that was not the first that time. That was the first you, time ever. Ever you went to Nepal? Yes. At the age of 23 yes. after being born and raised in Manipur? I, I went to Nepal and in my own country I became an immigrant again because I was not born in Nepal. Right. So you were Indian citizen. You yes. went to Nepal as and a became a Nepali, Nepali citizen yeah. by generation, okay. not by birth. Nepal has that provision like if your parents are Nepalese then you can be a citizen through them, right? Yeah. To get admission, to get to get admission in colleges, to stay in Nepal, mm -hmm. you need to be a, mm -hmm. a citizen of Nepal. Mm -hmm. So at the time, my my father applied the citizenship for me. So how did you feel going in Nepal? Can you share your experiences? Did you feel like you belong? You are you had the similar experiences, similar experience, or no. did you feel like you were a little foreigner? I'm a. I felt like I'm a foreigner. Okay. I in felt totally, I felt like I'm a foreigner because of the language, because of the culture, because, you know, like a, even though I'm a Nepali, but I am it. raised in a very different culture. Right. In a very different situation, different culture. Right. The, so, so what is the different culture that you felt? Actually, first, what I felt when I came to Nepal, like a, uh, the language. You, so you did not speak Nepali at that time? I speak Nepali, but my action was ne not a Nepali action. Okay. Maybe it's kind of little mixed up with Hindi word or more Hindi slangs. Mm -hmm. And uh, that makes and uh, your dress up and your way of talking, it can, people can different say that she is not from Nepal. She's not native. She's not Nepal. native. She's yeah. not native. Oh wow! Yeah, but that was a big challenge for me, and uh, I had an opportunity um, soon when I came to Nepal. I had an opportunity to work in the community. Okay. I so and uh, there I learned Nepali mm. in normal. Wow. So that was the big challenge. Wow! And now you have come to America from far away, and helping Nepali community to preserve and enjoy the Nepali culture with all the knowledge and experiences you have from Manipur to Kathmandu to various parts of Nepal, working in various parts of Nepal, and now living in America as an immigrant mother yourself, raising a, a child who has such an enriched you know, parents. And I really would like to thank you for coming here today and sharing all your experience in our Cultural Nepal program. And I hope that we will continue our conversation in future. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. And uh, before we come to an end, uh, you mentioned about the Nepali Women Global Network. And uh, I'm really, I feel very honored to represent that uh, organization here in Boston, mm -hmm. though it's a global, so it has given a lot of opportunity for our Nepali sisters to come together in one platform. And uh, very soon in March uh, this 2016, hopefully we will be organizing an International Women's Day again, mm -hmm. where all work of women will come together, like last year we, mm -hmm. uh, we did in MIT. Mm -hmm. and, um, um, and as you said, I'm very thankful for this talk program and we'll continue our conversation. Yes, and we're Thank very you. lucky to have you in our community as well as in a studio and we look forward to long work together. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Arunaji. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Right. Thank you. <laughs>
program, I just would like to invite Aruna Sharma to continue this speech and give a brief introduction and, and to honor our mothers. Thank you. Abuse is not just about feminism and women's rights. It is a basic fact of life that touches everybody in one way or another. Life happens 
and there are times in our lives we get confused and need help to seek answers. No matter how strong and good we are, we need support to examine ourselves, just like we need vitamins for our strength. Spirituality helps us build understanding and prevent or minimize abuse. In Nepal, we have learned to deal with abuse that we cannot avoid in old and rich rituals. There, little breaks in hard work for togetherness are embedded in everyday life. And here in America, we try to do the same through Nepali Women's Global Network. For that, we meet, we share, we sing, and we care. We think together to live better life and to be of service to others. We celebrate New Year, Teas, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and many more in between. Our gender is our coincidence, but our relationship is something we need to work together always. And thus, we recognize a few amazing ladies who inspire all of us today.
that has many facets of Italian culture, I'd like to request the bold men and ladies to come forward and receive recognition. So, would you like to come forward? Um, watching Culture in Nepal. In future episode, we'll continue to explore Nepali motherhood from many different perspectives. <laughs>